Hey, Indy here with Ultimate Tool Reviews, and this is every single Makita tool and battery that I currently own. All right, guys, let's start going over some of these tools here. Now, I've been a Makita fan for quite a while. My first tool set was actually not Makita. Um, I actually bought into some of the DeWalt stick stuff, the 18 volt stuff quite a while ago. And I later moved on to some Makita stuff. And it's been a fantastic brand for me. I kind of just never really stopped buying it. So I'll start over here with some of the hand tools all the way on the right side here. Uh, starting off with one of the newer tools I picked up recently. This is the Makita XMT-03 multi-tool. Um, it's not my favorite multi-tool I've ever used, but it's definitely got, you know, a lot of bulk, a lot of durability to it. And uh, it's served me well so far. So moving on over here, one tool I got a really good deal on that I don't necessarily use a ton is the Makita 12 volt CXT pin nailer. This is actually my first ever made in Japan tool. Uh, got this a couple of months back and it's been a really cool pin nailer. Um, not my favorite compared to the Metabo HPT, but it has some other cool features that the Metabo doesn't have. Um, I will say I like to try out the 12 volt model as well to see how it compares, but I like the CXT so far, but you know, the Metabo is definitely on the cheaper side. Feels a lot lighter, a lot more compact in my opinion, but still a great tool anyways. All right, moving back now a little bit, we have just the regular Makita work light here. Of course, you're gonna run into a couple of these here and there. Um, these are pretty cheap to have. Not my favorite work light, but overall it gets the job done. We need, to, we need some extra light here and there. Now I have the Makita Planner. Uh, this is a pretty cool tool, uh, cordless planner. Use it a couple times for some furniture projects that I was doing, and overall it has worked really nicely for what I needed to do. Not a very common use tool for me. It's the Makita XPK01. Got this for about $100 on Amazon when it went on sale, and I couldn't resist picking up at that price. It's been a great tool so far, and I definitely recommend it. All right, moving on to the big Makita wrench. This is the half-inch impact wrench. This is Makita's high torque, and I wasn't really particular that I bought the Makita high torque. Um, I actually ended up buying this because I found such a great deal on it. Uh, I think I got it for like around, I remember like around 150 bucks with a five amp hour battery. And overall, it's been a fantastic impact wrench. Um, I had a mid-torque mid DeWalt for a while, but I figured, you know what, I found it such a good deal in the high torque. I went and sold off a lot of my mid-torque stuff. Just went high torque, and I've been pretty happy with it so far. The only thing with it that, that I don't like is if you watch Torque Test channel, they have that wrist-breaking score, and they give us actually a pretty high score. I definitely agree with that. Um, it does like to jump off bolts. So make sure you gotta have a lot of weight behind it. Keep it on those bolts. All right, this is the Makita 20 volt trim router. Um, I've put this thing through quite a bit of use. Um, a really nice trim router. Um, I like it a lot. Um, it's a really nice, light, compact, easy to use package. It's the XTR01. And you know, I don't have any complaints about this thing too much. Um, everything seems to work great on this. Um, haven't really, I've probably used it a good, you know, 20, 30 times now and don't really have any complaints about it at all. It just works great. Just picked this up recently. This is the Makita 3 8 and quarter inch ratchet. That's the XRW01. Um, haven't used this really too much. I just did a review on this not too long ago. Um, really cool design by Makita here. I've seen a lot of these out there now, uh, especially when they have the buy one, uh, get one free tool right now. And uh, the buy the tool set, get two free tools right now at Home Depot. So it's part of those tools. And uh, if you want a cordless ratchet, here's a good one to pick up right now. All right, moving on to the blowers now. I do have three blowers and they all have awesome uses to them. So starting with the smallest one, this is gonna be the 18 volt. This is just the kind of the smallest um, blower they make. Um, that's in the 18 volt range and they do have a new XGT that's now basically the size of like an impact driver but This is the XBU05 and this is fantastic in my back workshop for just kind of clearing things off quick Don't anything too powerful or too big. This thing works fantastic. It's been heavily used over the past year or so uh, This is the Makita 
Um, this is just a regular 18 volt single battery. This thing goes on sale all the time. Uh, I got this thing at Tractor Supply Co. for 50 bucks. They had a good clearance sale on this. And it does eat batteries pretty quick is the only downside to it. But I use it for cleaning out gutters because it's so light, so powerful, super easy to use. I like this thing definitely a lot. Now, moving up to the big one. This is the Makita 36 volt blower. I got this on a, um, I think it was a re renewed item on Amazon for like 140 bucks or so. And this thing definitely has a bit more power than the 18 volt, but not a huge amount of more power. Uh, it does run off two batteries. Definitely will burn batteries a lot slower than 18 volt, but now you have two batteries to charge instead of one. All right, moving over here to the Makita. This is the 36 volt miter saw. This is the XLS06. It's a 10 inch miter saw. Um, has a lot of really nice, cool features to it. You can put it right up against the back of a shop wall and it'll still be able to move all the way back and forth, which is really nice to have. Um, it's got the rail forward design as it's called, I believe and has a nice little battery indicator right here. The batteries actually go in right over there to the side, which is a great spot to put them, really keeps them out of the way nicely. Only downside of this thing is it is definitely heavy. Um, I think it's about 50 pounds or so from what I remember. And you know, it's a great miter saw. I love having no cord to it, uh, but you can definitely tell the difference between this and a corded miter saw. It's definitely gonna be less powerful. Also, it's very heavy but it is very precise. I definitely love using it. Also, I did fry the blade already that came with it, uh, but I've been using these Wen blades that I got off Amazon. Um, I think it was like 20 bucks for two of them, and they are absolutely phenomenal. I've used this thing quite a bit now on a number of different projects, and it's been cutting excellent. So I definitely recommend that. Not sponsored anything by them. I definitely, I paid for it myself, but I definitely recommend those blades. They're not really well. They've been working really nice for me so far. And right up here against my garage door, I've got two of the Makita 18 volt. These are the stick vacs from Makita. They do have the, I think it's like called the uh, cyclone attachment is what it's called. And my wife owns a cleaning company, so she uses these quite a bit. They are pretty mixed in the reviews, but you know they're designed for small cleanup on hardwood floors, not for carpet, um, but just for light to medium duty on hard floors. And they work really well then for just that. So, you know, some guys like them, some guys don't, but we definitely love them, we use them a ton. We like them so much, we actually bought a second one for keeping in the house, and then one for on the job. So, they've been excellent, and they're quite cheap as well, too. You can get them for about 70 bucks a piece on eBay. Uh, brand new in the box. All right, now moving to the front here. This is all my drills, impacts, impact wrench here. Um, I've got a lot of these. So, this is probably one of my favorite Makita drills right here. This is the... XPH 12, just a really nice, lightweight, still, but still powerful drill. You can find these things really cheap online and they do an excellent job. And I do like keeping this drill with me for at home use, is where I use it primarily. But moving to a job site drill, this is the one I use on the job all the time. This is the XPH 14. I just bought a new one of these. I saw in some of my deals here, this is the new one I just picked up. And overall, this has been a fantastic drill. Definitely a big improvement over the previous model. It's smaller, more compact, and more powerful. Here's kind of an odd tool that I've never really been able to figure out what I did, what to do with it exactly until I started doing some more handyman work. This is the XWT12. This is a 3 8 inch impact wrench. It is brushless, uh, but it's probably one of the weakest 3 8 inch impact wrenches on the market. Now, it's great for putting a, say, like a Torx adapter socket on here and using this to put in small bolts. That's what I've been using it for a lot recently. I like how the head is, and if you notice, it's not compact. It's still long, but it's very short and very small at the head. So it can fit in some really tight angles um, and do a really good job with that. Or if you compare it to something like some of the newer impacts, as you can see, the head gets a little bit thicker, uh, but they're shorter. So that's gonna be the difference with some of these impacts from Makita. Um, they kind of go in different directions when it comes to compact and size there. Same goes for this impact here. Uh, my wife uses this one a lot in the workshop. This is the CXT 12 volt. Um, this is not brushless, probably the, one of the only brush tools I have from Makita. Uh, these things are absolutely dirt cheap. Um, I got this one, I think, for like 30 or 40 bucks with a battery. It actually came with two batteries on eBay. Um, I think it was refurbished. Um, and, you know, it's been a great little impact. It does the job. Definitely keep this thing for only light duty use only. All right, then here is my impact collection from Makita. 
Um, I'm trying to kind of save all my old ones as I go um, keep buying the new ones. So I've got the 13 here. This is the 14. I got the 16 and then I've got two 19s. I have two 19s because I picked one up in the new kit as well as I bought one as soon as I could possibly find one here in the US. All right, guys, now moving on over to batteries. So I have total for LXT batteries. I have 39 LXT batteries. I have two CXT 12 volt batteries and I have one XGT battery over there. And that is gonna be my total battery collection now. So if you're wondering why I have so many LXT batteries, we'll get to that in just a bit. But if you give, I'll give you a hint, it's gonna be for those tools right over there. And if you wanna see more on the impact drivers, I'll link a few videos I have of some previous information and kind of some reviews I did on the impact drivers. Um, but currently my favorite impact driver from Makita is the XDT-16. That is the previous model. You can now get them a lot cheaper now with the XDT-19s out. Um, but overall, I like it. It's a very good balanced impact driver. Um, not the first impact driver I got from Makita. That'd be this one right here. Uh, what is this, the 14? And that kind of is what got me really solidified into Makita was when I picked this up with the hammer drill. All right, moving on to some of the Makita white stuff I've got here. Uh, this is the Makita radio. I actually ended up finding this thing um, just kind of laying out in the junkyard and I didn't think it worked too well, but plugged it back in, did a little bit minor repairs to it and now it works fantastic. Uh, this is a little Makita light, got it on clearance at Home Depot for like seven bucks. Um, not really useful, I would say, but it's still a pretty cool tool to have. And I thought it was kind of cool to get a Makita light in white. Uh, this is the Makita coffee maker. Uh, this came in handy during the last hurricane that I went through, Hurricane Ian, and I was able to heat up um, hot water with it. it. was really cool and also make coffee. Just be aware that if you pick this up though, it does burn through batteries like crazy. It'll burn through pretty much a whole four amp hour battery. Just give you one cup of coffee. All right, then we have some of the Makita bit sets. Um, in my opinion, I would say Makita is probably like second or third when it comes to the best bits. Uh, my opinion, I would say Bosch definitely has the best bits out there. Um, you know, they're not bad or anything, but if you can find a really good deal on some of the Makita XPS bits, definitely go with them. They're a great choice. Now, if you're wondering what this little piece here is, um, every brand makes one of these. Now this is an off-brand one, but all you gotta do is you plug it into any LXT battery. It clips in just like that. And now I have a USB out on here, which is really cool. I can charge my phone um, on these Makita batteries. So really cool thing to have. Although they're really expensive though, if you buy the actual genuine ones, um, this thing was like five or 10 bucks on Amazon. It works absolutely fantastic. So these are pretty cool to have. And uh, definitely down here in Florida, we have hurricanes, we do lose power and being able to charge your phone is definitely really valuable. All right, moving over here, I have a jigsaw and I have the orbital sander. Now the jigsaw is fantastic. This is the brushed one. Um, Makita is pretty well known for having some of the most expensive jigsaws out there. They do have some of the brush, brushless ones out now, uh, but they're approaching $300 now for just the tool only. Um, the brush one, in my opinion, works absolutely fantastic. And I've gotten a lot of my money's worth out of that tool. Uh, here is the random orbital sander. Uh, this thing is awesome. I use this thing all the time for doing furniture repair, uh, cleaning up different pieces of wood here and there. It does burn through batteries relatively quickly, uh, but if you have three or four batteries, you can be able to swap that thing out and pretty much run that thing nonstop with three or four batteries. So really nice to have, and definitely don't like having a cord on my sanders. So this is a great tool to have you do a lot of sanding. All right, moving on to the Makita grinders over here. I have the new X-Lock and I have the older not X-Lock, just the regular toggle switch one. Uh, these are both toggle switches. Uh, definitely a fan of the toggle switch, not a fan of the paddle at all. Uh, but mostly use them for doing a little bit of metal cutting here and there, sharpening my mower blades. Um, I'm not really a, you know, I don't use a grinder a lot here and there. Um, but the Makita grinders have been excellent. Not a single issue with these at all. And uh, they've overall been, you know, really good tools. Um, overall, not too much to say about the grinders. Just haven't really used them too much recently. All right, moving on to reciprocating saws. This is the Makita. This is the brushless 18 volt reciprocating saw. This thing is an absolute beast. 
Um, it's got the rafter hook on here, got the adjustable shoe. And the only thing I don't like about this saw is right up here, it gives you two speed selections, but this little switch up here, you can bump it really easily and you can bump it basically into the lock position. I bump it all the time. It's really annoying that you can bump this thing and it just stops working when you bump it into the lock position. Uh, now moving on to the Makita XGT. This is the only XGT tool that I currently own. Um, and that's purely because of price. There hasn't been really any good deal in XGT tools. And they're just nearly sometimes three or four times, or sorry, two to three times more expensive than the equivalent LXT tool. Well, not necessarily being that much more powerful just yet. Uh, but this is the Gen 1. There's a new Gen 2 that has orbital action. Uh, but this is easily one of the most powerful reciprocating saws that I currently own. Comes with the 4 amp hour battery. I bought this thing right when it came out. I bought the kit. I think the kit was like $320. Definitely really expensive for what it is. Uh, but it's an excellent tool. I've done entire demolition jobs taking out big fences with this thing and only burn about half a battery. So definitely impressive, but you're definitely going to pay for it. It does have the exact same... Uh, switch up here like the like the 18 volt and yes it is just as annoying you can bump this thing with gloves on really really easily uh, but it does have the rafter hook does have the adjustable shoe as well too all right moving back here to circular saws um, now i got rid of a few recently here i actually had the top handle 36 volt and I actually bought a new 36 volt top handle but i ended up selling both of those um, I can get away with the 18 volt, this is just the brushed one, and the 36 volt rear handle. These have been my two favorite circular saws so far, and never was really a huge fan of that top handle. It is super bulky when it comes to width, uh, but I've used this thing a ton. This thing is an absolute workhorse. I've been through a couple blades on these now, um, but remember guys, Diablo blades, easily the best blades out there money can buy. Um, I won't use anything else. Nothing even comes close to Diablo blades. That's pretty much all I use in my Cirque saws. Now, if I had to pick one Cirque saw between these two, I'd probably go with the 36 volt. Definitely a bit more power. I like the rear handle. You can use it very, you can use it with one hand quite easily. Uh, but the brushed uh, 18 volt is an excellent saw. Uh, really hard to, you know, say anything bad about this saw it is excellent. All right, now guys, moving on to the reason why I own so many batteries. Um, so I'm here in Florida and we get hurricanes, we get large storms pretty often. And, you know, people have tree debris very frequently down here. And so I do a lot of tree debris, you know, cleanup. I don't really do any tree work at all. Um, I just do, you know, if someone had a branch fall down their backyard, I come and clean up for them. So I've got two of the top handle. These are kind of the pruning saws. In my opinion, these saws are some of the most underrated saws out there. Now, they don't get the best reviews. Here. They are very weak in comparison to some other saws, uh, but they're excellent for just doing small cleanup work. If you got to get inside, like, you know, a brush and take out um, some, you know, some bushes here and there, this is an excellent saw to do that. It's just, it's so light, so compact. And, you know, taking out stuff like that thick or so, it'll do just an absolute amazing job. All right, moving back here now, I've got two of the 36 volt saws. The reason I bought a second one was first I got a really good deal on a second one, but the other reason is that these things do overheat. And I don't care what brand, DeWalt, Milwaukee, Makita, they will all overheat. It's using batteries, using an electric motor. They produce a ton of heat when these things are under load. Now having two of these allows you to use one till it gets to, get to its thermal point, and then you can swap to the other one and then let the, other, let the first one cool down. Very handy to have two of these. You can pretty much run these things non-stop. Then when you have two, able to swap them out and kind of go from there. These things have been absolute workhorses. I use these things a ton down here in Florida. And I've probably gone through at least two or three chains and bars on each one now. Um, so they've been excellent. But be ready, though, for using these things. Have at least 16 batteries with you. If you're going to use this thing for more than, say, 30 or 40 minutes. These things go through batteries like crazy when you do a lot of cutting with these. This is the reason why I have so many Makita batteries is these saws right here. All right, I've got the Makita. This is just the base model, kind of the, you know, the homeowner grade uh, hedge trimmer here. Uh, this is the XHU02. Now I've got a few hedges on my property, nothing too crazy, but I pull this thing out maybe once a month to do some cleanup on there. Um, I did get a nicer DeWalt already that I got for even cheaper on a really good deal at Tractor Supply Company. And I've been using that for quite a bit now, but this is kind of more of my fine finish head trimmer. It's really, really light, really compact, and does a nice, very good cleanup job. Leaves everything very cut, very clean. 
Um, so it's been a great tool so far. All right, then moving on to the lawnmower. That's the Makita XML03. Uh, this is not the silver pebble one. This is just the regular $400 mower. I paid full retail for this one. Came with four 4 amp hour batteries and a dual charger. Um, I have done some upgrades to the uh, lawnmower blade. Uh, Makita kind of dropped the ball pretty bad on not having any stock of the Makita blades in anywhere. Um, they're pretty much in back order, I've heard, till late November, December. Uh, but I found another blade that worked. I commodified the hole in the blade and got it on there and it works fine. Uh, so, you know, the Makita mowers are pretty good, you know. Um, I would say the only thing better than that is going to be like the Ego mowers. Uh, those things are just top notch. Uh, but the Makita mowers never let me down so far. It's been absolutely amazing. All right, then moving on over here to the string trimmers. I've got two of the string trimmers. I got the 18 volt string trimmer. This thing goes on sale at Home Depot all the time for like a hundred bucks. Comes with a four amp hour battery and a charger. It's a super light string trimmer. It's really cool to have. If you're doing a quick job, you can do some cleanup somewhere in someone's backyard, even your own backyard, clean up a fence line really quick. It's an excellent string trimmer. Now I did find a deal finally on the 36 volt string trimmer. This thing runs off two batteries and overall, it puts out a ton of power. It got a ton of life to it. It does have one serious weakness. I did a video on this not too long ago about changing out the head to the Echo Speed Feed 400. Haven't given a chance to use this thing yet, as we're now we're kind of in the Florida winter where the grass doesn't really grow too much. So kind of been sitting in the garage waiting for a, another storm to come through and make that grass grow. But overall, you know, Zach has this thing as well too. And uh, it definitely puts out a way more pump, way more punch, way more power than the 18 volt string trimmer. Um, but we've done entire, you know, backyard cleanups with just the 18 volt string trimmers, and they've done excellent so far. So Makita makes an excellent string trimmer. They're very light, very powerful. One of the tools that actually made me switch over to full Makita was the 18 volt string trimmer. I just love it so much. It works so well. All right, moving on back here. I've got a couple of boxes here now. Can you guess which one is empty and which one actually has stuff in it? Because there is one that is empty back here. I'll let you guess quick and then we'll move on. Now, just kidding. Let's go to this one right here. This that I have not covered on the channel just yet. But I scored a deal on this on eBay. This is the Makita 18 volt SDS. Comes with the HEPA filter as well and uh, HEPA filter plus the vacuum. And I use this thing, you know, very rarely if I gotta do something where I gotta do a little bit of concrete, you know, break up some concrete here and there, or do a larger hole in masonry. I pull this thing out maybe like once or twice a year, uh, but I picked this thing up for like 40 bucks on eBay. It was really, really cheap. I couldn't pass up on it. Um, it's definitely out of warranty by now, but it still works fine, and uh, it's a pretty cool Makita tool. Definitely not going to find these cheap anywhere, so when I saw this thing for that cheap, I'm like, you know what, I'll take the risk, and I went and bought it. So I've got one of the Makita roller bags back there. Um, I forget which set that it came with. Um, it's one of the bigger Makita bags. You know, it has the handle over here, the wheels over here. Um, I never really use it. I'm kind of a pack out guy myself, so I use a pack out um, pretty much for everyday use. But it's a cool big bag to have, you know, just in case you need something um, on the bigger side. Um, does feel a little, you know, kind of fragile. I'm kind of worried to put a bunch of tools in it and see it maybe break or the handle break off, but cool tool bag. And so this is the empty box here. This is actually the box for that uh, CXT impact driver that I have. All right, and this metal box here from Makita. I did a video not too long ago on this. This is the Makita uh, really vintage drill. I've had some people in the comments tell me this is probably even older than I think. Um, possibly somewhere in the 80s or 90s. This is, of course has two NICAD batteries in here with two rapid chargers. Um, so I really don't ever, this isn't a tool I really ever use, but really cool to have a piece of Makita history here. So I kind of just keep this thing for uh, kind of old time sake here in the garage. So if you're wondering why I got into Makita tools, why I have so many Makita tools, uh, it's gonna be for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is Makita tools are just really reliable. I like what they make. They make every tool for the most part that I need. Um, where some other brands have some holes in the certain areas where I need like outdoor power tools. Milwaukee took forever to come up with a mower. And when they finally did come up with a mower, it's like 1200 bucks. I'm not spending 1200 bucks on a cordless mower. So I went Makita all in with the outdoor power tools. Uh, they got a few options for string trimmers. They've got a ton of options for blowers where Milwaukee's been very, very limited in that aspect. 
Um, I do like the chainsaws are probably one of the biggest reasons and probably one of my favorite tools for Makita. Uh, why I went full on Makita. I do like the dual battery chainsaws. No one else is doing dual battery chainsaws right now and they work excellent for what I need. And I like the top handle saws as well too. A couple of brands have those now, but um, the dual dual battery chainsaws are pretty much unbeatable at this point, other than maybe like Ego or some of the top Milwaukee saws as well too. And of course, you know, I gotta maintain my yard. So having you know the cordless blower options is to go along with it is excellent. The dual battery blower. I know Milwaukee just came out with one, but Makita's had this out forever. And the Makita is easily half the price tool only of the Milwaukee. So really big factor for me buying, you know, a lot of these tools. Um, being able to find really good deals on these two is a big factor for me. Um, now, but the second reason why I like Makita tools so much is this is kind of more a personal opinion here, but the battery deals they have are phenomenal. Um, I feel like almost every time I look around, there's a really good battery deal. Um, I covered it recently in another video where I had um, checking out some of the deals at Home Depot and that, that 36 volt saw where you get, you know, two free batteries with it whenever it comes with two batteries. So four batteries total with that saw for like 250 bucks. That was a big push for me to get into Makita. Uh, no one has other, other deals that like that for five and four batteries. And that's how I was able to collect so many batteries so quickly as well too. I feel like every time I turn around, there's some awesome, you know, uh, Makita battery deal. The mower came with four batteries. Uh, the string trimmer came with four batteries. Uh, there's so much stuff here that just comes with a ton of batteries and it's easy to start collecting Makita batteries so quickly as well. Um, so that's a big reason why I got into Makita so much is being able to get so many batteries for such a good deal. Um, as well as, you know, their battery warranty is very simple where, you know, Milwaukee has some different batteries that are, you know, one year or two year. Makita is three year warranty on, you know, chargers, batteries, tools, everything. It's just very, very easy. Also wanted to mention too, you know, I didn't show off any of the chargers. The reason why I didn't have any of the chargers over there is because I got all my chargers mounted up here on the wall. I got some of my Tabo chargers there. Uh, over to my right is where I have my DeWalt and Milwaukee chargers and another Metabo charger as well too. Uh, but I've got another dual charger sitting in a drawer and then another single LXT charger in a drawer as well too. Uh, but that pretty much brings to every possible Makita charger battery tool that I currently own. But yeah, guys, I've owned a lot of other Makita tools. I do like to, you know, buy and sell. I find deals pretty often on Makita stuff. So I like to buy if I can buy it cheap and then resell it for more. I do that as well too. But these are pretty much my, you know, use them all the time tools from Makita. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make a separate video here shortly, probably in the next week or so, and if I get time on my worst Makita tools. Um, no brand is perfect and uh, Makita is no exception, but they have made some tools that I have definitely found to be absolutely horrible. And you know, what's funny is I've owned a lot of DeWalt Milwaukee stuff as well too. I think Makita also made the worst drill. And I'll get to that in a later video. But guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour of all my Makita tools. Uh, if you got any questions for me, leave a comment below. I'll try to get to it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be one comment that I'm probably gonna get a couple times below. How much did I spend on all of this? Uh, kind of hard to estimate because I've gotten a lot of these things I've gotten on really, really good deals. Um, there's been a, just a handful of tools here that I've paid full price for. Um, like the mower I paid full price for at 400 bucks. Um, one of the chainsaws I got for like $340 of four batteries. Um, I got like a really good deal on the miter saw. I only paid 250 bucks for that. Okay, that was for the kit with two batteries and a dual charger. So a lot of the tools I bought here are definitely not at full retail price. I've gotten a lot of deals on these things. So um, if I had to throw a number on it, what I would think I paid for all of these tools, I'd probably say I'm at around three or 4,000 so far. Uh, but I've made that back really, really quick with a lot of the jobs that I do. Um, and you know, a number of jobs you can do, you know, buying tools and being, being able to understand what you're doing with the tools. Um, you can do really well, you know, owning your own business with this stuff. And I've really liked Makita tools so far for the probably, I think I've probably used them for now for a total of three years now I've been into Makita. But of course, I've got a ton of DeWalt, ton of Milwaukee as well too. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, Makita makes the best everything, but they've definitely been a really good line for me to get into and they've been really well, they've done really well to me. I've had a few warranty claims here and there and they've, they've approved it every single time, no issue at all. 
So guys, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the whole tour of my Makita tools. It took me a couple hours here to, you know, assemble all these tools out of our vehicles, out of the workshop and the garage here. Uh, so guys, leave me, leave me a like, a comment. Don't forget to subscribe as well. And hope you guys enjoyed the video, guys. Take care, be safe out there, and uh, have a good evening.